Pistons on their way into the ballpark. We're set for Cubs baseball on WGN Sports. Rubber game today coming out of the break. It's the Cubs and the Braves coming up. Great to have you with us. Jim Deshays and Len Casper with you. 4-2 Braves Friday night. Cubs a 4 nothing winner last night in the last couple of weeks. Man, the Cubs starting pitching has been dazzling. Indeed it has. Uh, Friday night, Kyle Hendricks was really good. John Lester last night flirted with a no-hitter. Continuing a trend, and we check in with that trend over the last 15 ball games. Cubs starters have posted a Major League Best 139 ERA while yielding a Major League Best 183 opponent batting average. John Lester took a no-no into the eighth. They combined two hits shutout last night. Jake Arrieta was the National League Player of the Week going into the break. Shelby Miller has been better than his record lately and he was an all-star. Yeah, Miller got touched up a little bit last time out in Colorado. Run support's been the big issue for him of late, but he's having an outstanding year. His first year here in Atlanta. And oh my, Jake Arrieta has been a spot on complete game last time out last Sunday against the White Sox. His last five, 4-0 with a 1-1-3. A late Sunday afternoon from Atlanta, the Cubs and the Braves. Before we ship off to Cincinnati, we'll have the final game of this series. Budweiser, still brewed the hard way. This Bud's for you. Honda Dream Garage Sales Event, now at your Honda dealer. Napa, home of Napa know-how. Ford, America's best-selling brand, inviting you to go further in our fuel-efficient vehicles. Check out our entire lineup at your Ford store or at localfordstores.com. Subway, make a smart play for savory subs this season. Score more flavor at Subway restaurants. Subway, eat fresh. And by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com.
Rizzo's the young Cub first baseman. He too an all-star. 16 homers, 50 knocked in, and a 298 average. And outside, one ball, no strikes. Now the Cubs do have a lot of free swingers, but this is not one of them. Rizzo with that high average. He has a great approach, very patient, and can hit the home run. And his numbers are not merely dictated by the friendly confines in Chicago. You see that on our Georgia lottery hitting the jackpot. One of three players with a 300 or better average, 10 or more homers, and 30 or more RBIs on the road. Fly ball into right. And playable for Nick Markakis. He's got it. Easy hitting for Miller. Those other two players, Mike Trout and Paul Goldschmidt. Three up, three down for Shelby Miller. Jake Freddie Gonzalez, Jace Peterson in the leadoff spot once again playing second. Maben in center. Marcakis still looking for his first homer of the year. Johnson in the cleanup spot. Look at what A.J. Pruszynski's done against Jake Arrieta. Siriaco with his lone start of the series at third. Perez again the game winner on Friday. Simmons the shortstop and Miller the pitcher. Cubs defensively on this sultry afternoon. Coglin, Fowler, Solaire, left center, right. Bryant Castro on the left side. Jonathan Herrera gets a start at second base. He's in for Russell. Rizzo's at first. Ross back behind the dish for Jake Arietta. He's having an outstanding year. 10 and 5 with a 266 after going 10 and 5 last year with a 2.53 earned run average. And a sinker low and out of the zone to Jace Peterson. 0 for 4 last night. Three strikeouts. They were all looking. Two balls, no strikes. Arietta turned in quite a gem right before the break, didn't he? Against the White Sox. Yeah, and much needed too because the Cubs had lost the first two games of that series and. He went out there and just slammed the door on the White Sox, allowed just two hits and one run in nine innings. He also hit a home run in that ball game. Cubs won the game three to one. He needs to recalibrate here and find the strike zone. And he does. Three and one. Here it comes. Strike two. Third career start for Arietta versus the Braves. Just a handful of at bats for a lot of their guys. And they showed you the Pruszynski six out of eight against him. Ball four, leadoff walk.
It's a little wobbly here with the mechanics early on, trying to get settled in on a foreign mound. And you look at the numbers for his last five starts, just outstanding stuff for Arietta. He's turned into one of the best pitchers in all of baseball. 266 ERA, good for eighth best in the NL. 216 batting average against, also eighth best in the National League. Well, remember, he missed the first month last year, made his debut on May 3rd. Since that first outing in 2014, 43 starts. He's 20 and 10 with a 259. One on, nobody out. Maven shows bunt and takes a strike. Maven has 12 infield hits. That leads the Braves. Starling Marte, the major league leader, he has 24. Maben has been traded three times in his career after being the 10th overall pick in the 05 draft taken by the Detroit Tigers. Softly hit the other way Herrera will pick it up and they'll get Maben. Peterson now at second with one out. Good read by Anthony Rizzo on that ball. Times you'll see him, you'll see any first baseman wander over trying to make a play on that one, and obviously it becomes a much more difficult play trying to make that throw back across your body to a covering pitcher. He recognized early on that Herrera was going to be able to make a play, so he covered the bag and let Herrera handle the ball. Arcakis, one out of eight in the series with a double, an RBI, a steal, and a run. And a hit taken away from him last night, as we mentioned. He admitted it was a, a first for him. Called a hit in the first inning, and then in the bottom of the sixth, I no, top of the seventh is when it was taken away. <laughs> I love Joe Madden's line. Yeah, that's a play that Chris normally makes. The degree of difficulty from the Russian judge was very low. That was the manager's assessment of that play. I was talking with Dave Martinez, a bench coach. He said he saw the change on the scoreboard. He said most of the guys in there saw it, but nobody wanted to tell Lester. He found out standing on deck in the top of the eighth. Yeah that is an awkward moment because obviously if a pitcher's had a no hitter going throughout the game he's fully aware of it despite what many say well I didn't know until the seventh inning well you, you always know but this time there have been you know the hit was called and then taken away and if you, you didn't peek at the scoreboard you, you wouldn't know. Our cake is wet. Could not hold up. Toby Basner rings him up from third. Two outs. Well, the other interesting thing is Freddie Gonzalez actually said after the game he didn't mind that it became a quote no hitter because he thought it maybe put a little more pressure on Lester. And then also, you know, if you're Joe Madden, you're, you might ride him a little longer than right, normal right, as yeah, a result. Yeah, yeah, you're very might have left him in there and uh, allowed a couple extra base runners. And indeed, that did happen. He gave up a couple hits. That's Jack Wilkinson, longtime official scorer here at Turner Field. Kelly Johnson, strike one. Yeah, he said he was second guessing his decision from the moment he made it. Uh, that's that's an, an official scorer's nightmare. They were joking about the unwritten rules of appeals. If Lester finishes a game with a no hitter, would Nick Markakis or the Braves even consider appealing to the league office to have that play looked at one more time? Yeah, no, no <laughs> chance. Two strikes on uh, Kelly Johnson. That's Peterson at second. He walked. To start the inning. Arietta trying to get settled in. One and two. The, the, the other question that's more intriguing is if the rule is not changed during the game and it remains a hit, 
to the Cubs or John Lester or John Lester's agent, you know, may call the league office and say, hey, take a look at this. We think this should have been an error and it should be a no hitter. Two and two. You and I might have had to make a call of a no hitter two weeks later. After the fact, yeah. The guy who broke it up is on deck. Outside Johnson thought it was ball four but it's actually ball three. If you have a home plate umpires bad at math you might get away with it. Although replay now you can review balls and strikes. Make sure that you've got the count right. Peterson takes off for third. That is ball four. No throw there. So he'll get a stolen base. Two walks in the inning. So that's an 0-2 to 4-2. And it will bring up Przinski. And Seinfeld, his name is Newman. In baseball, it's Przinski. Hello, AJ. <laughs> And he's been hot. His last eight games, he has 14 hits. Somewhat of a self inflicted jam here for Arietta with two outs. A couple of walks here in the first. Yeah, and just, you know, he missed with the 3 1 or the, uh, yeah, the 3 1, 2 1 change up to Johnson. And then one with the breaking ball on 3 2. Didn't want to give him with a fastball. He's a pretty good fastball hitter. He's just a good hitter. Doesn't walk. Doesn't strike out much. Yeah, he's a hacker. He, like, he likes to swing the bat. Better than 300 with runners in scoring position. Lifetime 280 and change. Left handed hitters have not been an issue for Jake Arietta. As a matter of fact, he's been better against lefties than righties. Runner goes from first, so the Braves have decided. And they have opportunities. They're going to run today against Arietta. So two steals here in the first inning. And 14 stolen bases now with Jake on the mound. Five have been caught. He's fairly slow to home plate. And if you, especially if you guess right and you go on the breaking ball. One and two the count. The pitch. Swing and a miss on the curveball to end the inning. Two strikeouts for Arietta. To throw a bunch of pitches. A scoreless after an inning.
weekend here in Atlanta. You see the Braves at Wrigley Field in August. A four game series, the 20th through the 23rd. And Jorge Soler will lead it off. Cubs went down in order in the first. And a called strike. Miller just 24 years of age. Everybody in their starting rotation is 24 years of age or younger. As they rebuild here and they're doing it like the you know those glory years it was built mostly around pitching and they think they've got some very talented young arms and this guy's blossomed into one of the better pitchers in the league. Fly ball to right. That's Marcakis. Yeah, Miller came over uh, from the Cardinals in the Jason Hayward deal. Jordan Walden. It's uh, it's kind of the reverse of the deal they made years ago, where Wainwright went to St. Louis and J.D. Drew came here to Atlanta. Yeah. He came real close to a no hitter earlier this season. More on that in a second. Back in May, as Coughlin rifles one into center and Maben plays it on a hop. He got caught a little bit in between and decided to kind of pull up. And the Cubs have their first hit. Yeah, made a nice diving catch on a ball last night that was more of a humpback liner sinking into shallow left center field. This ball really scalded by Coughlin and Maben makes a late. A decision to back off and play it on a hop, and probably a wise decision. Here's Starlin Castro. Well, probably a running situation for Joe Madden here. Foul back to the screen. And Miller got within and out. It was a Dave Steve. Are we calling those Dave? Yeah, Steves? I like that. Yeah, you get within one out of a no hitter. He got steved. It was May the seventeenth in Miami. Justin Bohr broke it up. Foul tipped. And it's 0 and two. What happened? So I lost something on the swing. That, a little uh, thumb pad. Yeah, the thumb pad came off. Coglin at first, one out. Bad throw. Everybody safe. Peterson decided to take a chance and get Coughlin at second. It was not a good throw. Simmons was trying to not only grab the ball, but make sure he didn't get bowled over by Chris. And the winning team in the first two games of this series have both benefited from uh, misplays by the other side. And here, misplay by the Braves opens up the door for the Cubs. Coughlin's intent is to make sure there's no double play as he gets after Anderson Simmons here, but Aaron throw and everybody's safe. Fielder's choice for Castro, an error. Charge to Peterson. So two on for David Ross. And low for ball one. Miller getting close to that no hitter. It's an experience he's had many times. Uh, four no hitters while he was in high school. Three in a row. The senior year, including a perfect game. The 1 0 pitch to Ross, and he hooks this one foul to left. Now let's check out our Mazda replay. Cam Mazda conviction, creativity, courage. This is the Mazda way. So this was uh, May 17th in Miami, a dominating performance. He ended up with a two hit shutout, but again, 
was one batter away from history. It was Justin Bohr. Rolling one into center. Oh, so close. At just 94 pitches in that complete game. Well, he, he got a Maddox. I was going to say, he, he got steeped <laughs> and, and Maddoxed. <laughs> that was his last win. He's had a, he's been lestered. He has been lestered. Ten consecutive winless starts. How many more starting pitchers can we make into verbs? <laughs> but a 332 during this stretch, so that means he's not getting a lot of runs. No, yeah, he's had a lot of good starts in that stretch. He's allowed uh, two runs, two earned runs or fewer in 14 of his 18 starts. Despite that, he's just five and five. Last time out, he gave up five runs on 11 hits and five innings, but that was at Coors Field in Colorado, so. Almost have to throw that one out in evaluating a pitcher. Outside. Full count three and two. He's hoping to not get Arietta. Jake with a home run against the White Sox. See what the runners do here. Not going inside. They're loaded. And this is an interesting spot here, isn't it? We had a long chat with Joe before the game about his pitchers. This is not the kind of day in which <laughs> Joe's laughing right now. He's going, "Oh, here we go." This is not the kind of day where he wants Jake spending a lot of time running the bases, right? So I'm sure Joe's thinking either hit a home run or strike out. Yeah, swing as hard as you can. You hit it a long way or miss. Yeah, he was saying that you know, on a hot day like today, this wouldn't be a situation. But even in a normal bunting situation, he doesn't like to bunt because he doesn't want to risk his pitcher spending time on the bases. So potentially a key moment in this game as the Cubs try to grab an early lead. Fastball strike. The home run was off a left hander, Jose Quintana. The first of his career. He's got three hits over his last two starts. Herrera next. And the decal needs to be adjusted. Assuming that's his helmet. <laughs> Looks like he's playing for the Indianapolis Colts. One and two. Been a strange helmet year for Jonathan Herrera, hasn't it? And one game we were yeah had three worked, different helmets yeah. couldn't find his and here he comes with two outs as Arietta strikes out yeah, he went up there he had a helmet that was way too big for him you could tell it was bothering him but he reached base got one that fit that turned out to be Chris Coglins so we'll make sure we check now there in 19 that's his He's been good. He's, he's had, had, you know, for limited time, he's been an impactful player. Playing for the Utah Cubs. Or whatever that letter is. The Askew C. Into center field. A two out base hit. Cubs are going to get two runs. Coglin and Castro score. It's two to nothing. About the secret weapon. Don't touch that decal. <laughs> a line drive single by Coglin got it started. And then the error by Peterson opens the door. Ross works a walk. 
And after the strikeout to Arietta, Herrera delivers a big knock. So off to a great start this month. Not playing every day, obviously, but he's eight for 19, two doubles, a homer, and six RBIs to start July. Yeah, so it's it's a U on the helmet for his position, utility. Oh, yeah, nice. checking it out. Oh. There we go. C for secret weapon. And they made the Braves pay for the error by Peterson and then the walk in front of the pitcher. Cubs scored two unearned runs last night. Braves scored one unearned run on Friday. Two and two. Here's a pitch. We'll do it again. The game's already done since we started late. Zach Grenke continues his incredible stretch. Scoreless baseball. Dodgers a 5 nothing winner at Washington. It's low and the throw to second and Ross is back in plenty of time. At one point Zach Grenke retired 28 straight batters over the course of two starts. His scoreless streak now 43 and two thirds innings. He beat Max Scherzer. What a matchup that was. Grenke's ERA down to 130 after eight shutout innings, 11 strikeouts, one walk, three hits. The bases working today, this first Sunday after the All Star break. Runners go on the 3 2 and a high fly, right center, Maben. To end the inning, Cubs get a couple. Johnny Herrera with a two run single, and it's 2 0.
WGNSTV.com right now and click on the WGN Sports Game Zone banner to connect to all the up to the minute stats and info while watching at home. Game Zone is sponsored by The Great Escape. Pools, patio furniture, hot tubs, and more. Everything you need to have more fun at home this summer. Jonathan Herrera with a two run single. And those runs were both unearned because of an error earlier in the inning. By Jace Peterson. Siriaco, Perez, and Simmons against Arietta. Ball one. Jake walked two in the first inning. But struck out a couple as well. Yeah, a little wobbly with his command was misfiring up early to Peterson, the leadoff hitter. The Braves were not able to take advantage of that. And uh, normally when you see a pitcher of Arietta's caliber, it's just a matter of time before he settles in and finds that release point. It was a 22 pitch first. In on the hands and Siriaco cracked his back. And while we have a moment, we'd love to get your Cubs selfies. And hashtag WGN Cubs. Barry Bonds. And uh, his godfather, right? Willie Mays. Guess Willie was taking a nap and Barry decided to take a selfie. So Siriaco will get a new bat, a one two count on him. Siriaco has more plate appearances without a walk. Than anybody in Major League Baseball. I noticed she didn't pull out that note when it was three and one or something. No, I figured I'd get it in before he walked. I wouldn't want to jinx anybody. Siriaco, 29 years old, parts of six seasons in the big leagues. With the Pirates, the Red Sox, the Padres, the Royals, and now the Braves. Making his 15th start with Atlanta this year. It's like he borrowed your uh, Christmas sweater. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty cool. I guess. Uh oh. <laughs> Three and two. I want it to be noted. It was you this time. Yeah. Well, me. he's hacking right. Anything close, he's swinging. There's no way he's taking a walk here. His last words. Ross wants a slider. Swing and a miss. All's well that ends well. Third strikeout for Arietta to go along with a couple of walks here in the early going. You know he'd like to get some outs with fewer pitches here going forward. Yeah, he's on a pace for about a, a hundred eighty, hundred ninety pitch yeah. complete game. That's not going to happen. The guy who knocked in the game winning runs on Friday. Yuri Perez playing left. Okay, I, I don't know why. I'm, I'm not great with uniform numbers. Right? There are a lot of baseball fans who have this photographic memory. But for some reason, maybe it, I don't know what it is about the Braves uniform, but I, I, I feel like I have a pretty good handle. When I see 14, I think Julio Franco. Uh, yeah, I would have no clue on wearing that one. 25. Andrew Jones, right? Oh, no. 
What number was Jeff Blauser? No idea. Four. Bobby, you know, Bobby was number six, right? Bobby Cox? Yeah. On. on the ground, Herrera will pick it up. Hey, Cup fans, summer is here. Cubs return home this Friday, a three game set with the Phillies, followed by three with the Colorado Rockies. Plan now and get your tickets at Cubs.com. So the Phillies just engineered their first sweep since May. Walk off for Jeff Francoeur as they beat the Marlins eight to seven. One strike on Andrelton Simmons. Right to Bryant, who looks it in. And then that's the inning. One, two, three for Arietta, leading two zip. Well, the fastball command last night for John Lester, about as good as we've seen it all year. Yeah, uh, occasionally would elevate that fastball, but for the most part, it was stuffed down around the knees, inside, outside corner. Worked in a few slow breaking balls. And just, you know, if, if you were to rewatch that entire game pitch by pitch, you would see very few pitches out over the middle of the plate. Living on the edges. His offseason home here in Atlanta, so he's had a nice relaxing week at home. Chatting with Darnell McDonald on the trip. Speed replay brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. So it looks like Dale Murphy, the uh, Braves great, is doing a little QA on Twitter. 1 0 on Chris Bryant, and I bring that up because we were just talking uniform numbers, and he was asked, Why did you pick number three? And his response was, It was the number our equipment manager, Bill Acre, gave me. I said, Thank you very much. Three sounds like a number the player would choose for a specific reason, but in that case, they just gave it to him, and he yeah. said, All right. Yeah, sure. And that's why it usually worked out back in the day. They just give you a number and you're happy with it and you go play. If you had the opportunity to pick your uniform number and you came up with the Yanks, which number would you have picked? Um, would you have a number through high school and college? Yeah, kind of. I think 19. Okay. But I wasn't wedded to it. 
I, I'm just I happy when I got a real number because when I first got called up the Yankees, I think they gave me 66. And it's hard to get people out wearing 66. I would agree with that. Outside of the month of March. Now, I was asked about Joe Madden, why he wears 70, and he told us the story early. I, I seem to recall it was, but again, he was given the number, he wanted 20, but that was taken. Uh, in the Angels organization, but he ended up liking 70 because he knew wherever he would go. That Nobody was a number that was available. Because I think at some point early on, somebody, a player took the number he was wearing. My like player came in and was like his favorite number. Say, hey, can I have that? And said, oh, sure. So then he adopted 70, knowing nobody would want 70. Telling a story in his office uh, earlier today. It was after you left. Um, he's got a uh, a copy of a letter signed by Harry Carey that he had he had he had sent Harry a letter back when he was a kid in Hazleton, Pennsylvania. Strike three call. Bryant has struck out both times. Not too thrilled with that call by Tim Timmons. Chased a high heater first time and then Miller paints the outside yeah. corner. It was a good pitch. Yeah, it was for sure. But Joe, it was 1967. He was a big Cardinal fan. He listened right. to all the Cardinal games on the radio. And uh, Harry would occasionally read correspondence from fans and stuff. And Joe's, it wasn't even like Little League. It was some park rec league team had won, you know, the, their championship. And their picture was in the local paper. So Joe sent it to Harry with a letter asking him to sign it. And uh, Harry did, signed it, returned it to him. And mentioned Joe's name on the air. He said they were doing a game from Houston. And he listened every night and hearing, hey, congratulations to Joe Madden and the whatever the rec league team was. And, uh, and after his dad passed away, I, I guess it was, uh, going through some, you know, clippings and memorabilia and stuff, they came across the signed uh, picture from Harry. It's and very cool. Threw it in a frame. By the way, thanks to Brett on Twitter. Yeah, it was Don Sutton. When he joined the Angels for the number 20. And Don's not here today. It's the only game he's not working this series on radio. He will be uh, honored tomorrow uh, by the Braves. And there's uh, Chip Carey, former Cubs announcer, and Harry's grandson. He's working with Paul Bird this weekend on Braves television. And Don Sutton will go into the Braves Hall of Fame, longtime broadcaster here in Atlanta as Rizzo flies out to Perez. Here comes Solaire for the second time. He flied to right in his initial at bat. See, for me, Paul Bird, uh, when he was pitching, he always reminded me of uh, Kelsey Grammer. I used to always call him Frazier Crane. Yeah, that's a good that's a good call. Curveball on the outside corner. We'll get a shot of him later on and see if everybody agrees with the, the doppelganger. Fastball hit the deep center. Maven twisting and turning. It's gone. Jorge Soler with a home run. That's the first Cub homer since Arietta before the break. And it's three nothing Cubs. Oh, what a pretty sight that is for Cub fans. This team needs to find some extra help in that lineup. Jorge Soler blistered that fastball from Shelby Miller. Home run number five for Jorge. Mm, this is an impressive swing of the bat. Came in hard, went out harder. I say that one went over 400 feet. 
That is the first home run of the series. Juan Arebe got a hold of one late last night, but the wind seemed to knock it down. That is the second home run allowed to a right handed batter by Shelby Miller this year. Chris Coglin sends one high in the air down the right field line, and it is foul by a couple of feet. That had home run distance. They almost went back to back. That has not been an issue at all for Shelby Miller. The home run that Soler hit only the seventh he has allowed all year. And remember Soler had a DL stint with a sprained ankle missed basically a month 30 games but that is his first home run since May 29th against Kansas City. So it had been a while. Well, and then we talked about this the other night. He, he's a line drive hitter, and you would never counsel a hitter against that approach, trying to hit the ball on a line. But he's big and strong, and if you find a way to lift the ball a little bit more, obviously with that strength, he's capable of putting up some pretty good power numbers. And you see that a lot too, the evolution of a young hitter. Guy first gets to the big leagues, he's just trying to find his way, learning how to hit here, and then after you know a season or so of major league at bats. Kind of quote unquote learn how to hit home runs. Just put backspin on the ball or just change the, the, the plane of the bat a little bit. Battle here, another 2 2. And Miller wins the battle. But Solaire with a home run to center. Gnarls Barkley as we go to break here in Atlanta. 3 nothing Cubs. By Jeff Bukovic, your nationwide insurance agent, serving the area for 37 years. To join the nation, contact Jeff at jeffbook.com. Nationwide is on your side. Strike called on Shelby Miller. Braves batting in the third.
oh and two. Miller one hit in 30 tries. That was a double. His one career home run. Slider missed just off the corner. Called strike three. So Paul Bird as Frazier Crane. Yeah, yeah. I can see it now. Yeah. Seattle, I'm listening. 14 years in the big leagues. Frazier Crane? No, Paul Bird. Paul Bird. All star 99 with the Phillies. Late in his career after. Uh, Shoulder issues. He had that old school windup. Real exaggerated hands over the head windup and the old windmill. Yeah, and said it gave him some deception in his delivery. Said I needed everything I could use. Uh, that's, you got to be creative when the stuff is a little short late in the career. Peterson walked in the first inning, stole a base as well, but a key error helping the Cubs get their first two runs in the second. Can't say enough about how great the Starting pitching staff has been here lately. I mean, the highest ERA among the main four starters, 3.44. Yeah, it's been very impressive. Obviously, the, the Cubs, I think, still looking to address that fifth spot in the rotation. Um, so they've trade deadline coming up here in a couple of weeks. Continue to explore options there, just to add depth, if nothing else. Kyle Hendricks in the best stretch of his career. We will see the number five starter tomorrow night in Cincinnati. Left hander Clayton Richard, Jason Hamill, given a little extra time coming back from the hammy. So he'll go on Tuesday. Swing and a miss, strike three. Ten batters in, five strikeouts for Jake. Hey, Cup fans, let's go. Come out and enjoy the new Budweiser bleachers. There's no experience quite like it. The combination of exciting Cubs baseball and our new bleacher experience. We'll keep the Budweiser bleachers one of the hot spots for entertainment in Chicago all summer long. Visit Cubs.com slash bleachers to buy tickets and learn more about the available spaces. Triple A Iowa Cubs have rattled off five consecutive wins. Christian Villanueva, the game winning three run homer today. As the uh, I Cubs completed a four game sweep over the Memphis Redbirds. Junior Lake has been on a bit of a tear lately. You're right. Hitting the ball out of the ballpark. He went two for four today. So Junior 18 for his last 35. Bryant gets Maven to end the inning. Marietta has settled in after two walks in the first.
Visit the Cubs Authentics auction page every week for your chance to own one of a kind game used Cubs items. This week's auction includes the 1958 throwback jerseys worn on July 12th. Go to Cubs.com slash authentics before 8 p.m. tonight to place your bid. The Cubs will donate net proceeds from the sale of Cubs Authentics to Cubs Charities. Jake Arietta walked two men in the first inning. But uh, back to back one two three frames he's got five strikeouts through three and the Cubs have the lead and they'll try to add on here in the fourth against all star Shelby Miller. And a running fastball misses in on Starlin Castro. Reached on a fielder's choice in the second and scored on the Herrera single. So Miller I mentioned Brownwood Texas. Now Brownwood northwest of Austin southeast of Dallas. Or southwest I guess of Dallas. Round ball sharply hit but that will be picked up by Peterson. Uh, he's the third product of Brownwood High School to make the majors. Would you care to take a guess um, at the other two and they were both pitchers they were both left handed. Mm, Brownwood Texas. One pitched for a long time, the other did not, and was a, the subject of a movie. Wow. Huh. Jerry Don Gleaton was the first. Okay. Jim there was, Morris. There was not a movie about Jerry Don Gleaton. No, there was oh, about Jim, Jim Morris. Morris. Yeah, the rookie. Uh, the rookie. Yeah. He was the uh, 35 year old. Uh, Teacher slash coach, right, mm -hmm. who had been retired from pitching for about 10 years, decided to make a, a go of it in his mid 30s. He got all the way to the majors with the uh, Devil Rays. Yeah. Yeah, he went to Brownwood High School. Yeah. I did not know that. 3A school, not a real big school there in Central Texas. Back over our broadcast booth. One and two on David Ross. Miller was a very good football player in high school. He was a tight end and a punter. He was recruited by Texas A&M. Bounced foul wide of third. Did Dennis Quaid play the rookie? Did he play Jim Morris? I think he did. Because there was that scene where he was out on the side of the road, with the, where they had a speed trap set up, and he was thrown to the radar gun. I did not see that movie. You laugh, you'll cry. It's a great story. Um. Yeah, he had retired from pitching. He was back coaching high school ball and throwing BP and started to dial it up. And his guys like, man, coach, you get some giddy up on that heater. You have to make a comeback. The Mets have just grabbed a one nothing lead in St. Louis in the top of the 13th. Kevin Ploiecki RBI single scoring Curtis Granderson swing and a miss strike three. Number five for Miller and let's check out the Cubs Ford upcoming schedule. We've got four in the next three days in uh, Cincinnati off day Thursday and then back home to play the Phillies and the Rockies before heading off to Milwaukee Ford America's best selling brand inviting you to go further. In our fuel efficient vehicles, check out our entire lineup at your Ford store or at localfordstores.com. That ball shot the other way by Arietta. That is his fourth hit over his last three starts. Yeah, the manager might not be happy with that. But you saw Jake just kind of jog easily down to first base. He doesn't want him, want him pushing it out there on the bases. He's in control of this game. 
and shutting down this Braves lineup. So Joe doesn't want to see anything cut into his effectiveness. Big sturdy guy though, strong. Texas kid, you can handle it. And hard but foul by Herrera. He gave the Cubs the lead with a two run. Two out single in the second. So the Mets have scored a total of five runs in that three game series with St. Louis. And next up they have the Nationals and then the Dodgers and they will see both Kershaw and Granke. In the Dodgers series. Swing and a miss. It's a, it's a pretty tough gauntlet to have to run through. Simmons to Peterson at second. They force Arietta, and that's the inning. Cubs three, Braves nothing. Checking and an official Cubs MasterCard debit card only available at your local Wintrust Community Bank. Go to Wintrust.com slash Cubs to learn more. Member FDIC. Markakis Johnson Przinski, three consecutive left-handed hitters. Facing Arietta here in the Braves fourth. Home plate and the pitcher's mound in the shade. Still a lot of sun though. On the right side of the field, center field, right field. This is an odd start time. This is kind of like uh, we started around normal batting practice time, just after five o'clock. Pitch number 50 of the afternoon on a bounce to Bryant. It's kind of like the hack he had uh, for the base hit slash error in the game last night.
Indians beat the Reds the Cubs next opponent 5 3 and 11 today in Cincy mentioned Kyle Schwarber likely to get three starts out of four games in that series against the Reds right handed starters and pretty neat he grew up a Reds fan he's from Middletown Ohio not too far from Cincy and he just won the futures game MVP at Great American Ballpark so quite a whirlwind for the rookie Schwarber. Well, I got to believe there'll be a lot of Schwarbers on hand for this series. Yep. The winning run for the Indians today came in on a bases loaded walk to Jan Gomes. Johnny Cueto was a starting pitcher for Cincinnati today, so the Cubs will miss him in that series. He only lasted four innings through 94 pitches. Schwarbers uh, doing some homework there. One, two, Three, four of the five runs the Indians scored today came on bases loaded walks. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, Cueto walked six in his four innings. Aroldis Chapman threw 44 pitches in two innings of relief, so he won't be available tomorrow. Cardinals have just tied the Mets 1 1 in the 13th. Colton Wong with a leadoff home run. Uh, Jerry's familiar. How about that? <laughs> Terry Collins saves his closer till the Mets have a lead. They do. First battery faces. See ya. First run allowed by the entire staff. That one two. squirted it out of his hand a little bit. Hot day like today, sometimes the, the, the grip on the breaking pitch can be a little bit of an issue. We haven't seen much of that from Arietta here today. A pretty good action on the breaking ball. The cutter at times has been unbelievably sharp. That's Chris Bryant. Well, I know how Pat Hughes is going to score that because I asked him about it. Now. I put five three and then in parentheses four. Yeah, what's Matt do? Matt puts four three. So he's, he's His thought is it's a ground ball to second. Yeah. He'd rather know where the ball was hit as he's opposed right. to who yeah. made the play yeah, because so we don't keep track of assists. Right. And as, as a broadcaster, you want to look down and see where you hit the ball. Yep. And uh, I think that's a really good answer. Side to Przinski. Got two in the second unearned. One in the third. That was very earned. Jorge Soler with a home run. One and two to Przinski. Out in the right center, and that's the first Braves hit. A.J. Przinski with a double. Newman. Yeah, he got the first hit off Lester in the eighth last night. The first Braves hit today off Arietta here in the fourth. Well, what a good down. pitch, too. Yeah, you get that one. Up. Really used his legs, went down and got that good breaking ball from Arietta.
So you have not witnessed what AJ has done against the Cubs that much. And you were kind of looking sideways at me the other night. But I mean, he's almost in Yachty or Molina territory against the Cubs. And he, you know, he's former White Sox and Cardinal, mm -hmm. so well, and, and that's even worse. And plus, because of the kind of the uh, personality clashes right. at times, it, right. it really gets your attention. Uh, he came into play here. Uh, Look at that. Today, 310 lifetime. Yeah. yeah. Well, back by Syriaco. Jerry said Newman was pure evil. I, I, I don't know that Cubs necessarily or any other team feels that way about AJ, but we've talked about it. He's well, he's got that kind of gritty, uh, in-your-face personality, paper. rubs people the wrong way. Yes, he does, and you know, I think some of it—I wouldn't call it an act—but I think he he enjoys playing the villain. Swing and a miss to end the inning. So they get a hit, but no runs. Three nothing Cubs. Jake Arietta through four has allowed a two out double to AJ Pruszynski and uh, nothing else. A couple of walks, but no big time threats so far for the Braves offensively. The Cubs try to add to their three nothing advantage against Shelby Miller, who hasn't won in his last ten starting assignments. Strike called on Dexter Fowler. Mentioned the Reds earlier. 40 and 49 is we will see them for the first of four tomorrow night. And it's sounding more and more like they're not going to back up the truck, or at least backing up a uh, small minivan. Yeah, apparently uh, Bob Castellini, the owner, has given his blessing to a, a rebuild. So it was like Todd Frazier's not a guy they would probably think about right. moving. Botto and Phillips because of their contract. Bailey coming back from Tommy John, but everybody else probably guys, in play. Yeah. Um, Bird and Mike Leak, Leak, Johnny Cueto, Rollis Chapman, perhaps Jay Bruce. Bruce is an intriguing guy. He's picked it up a little bit after a very sluggish start.
Devin Mazzarocco done for the year, so he's not going anywhere. Now that would be another interesting kind of frontier. The guys who have been injured have been traded in the past, but how about the idea of trading for a guy in June who you know will not be available to the following year as opposed to well he'll be out two more weeks. I'm trying to think of somebody in that category. Guys get signed coming back from surgery. Mm -hmm. They rehab with a team. But if you're trying to get creative, yeah. well, the Braves acquired Bronson Arroyo, <laughs> right? Coming from back from Tommy backs. John, yeah. Fowler takes the uh, walk. By the way, uh, Bronson Arroyo was at uh, the Hot Stove Cool Music event a couple of weeks ago, and asked him when he's coming back, and I'm just not quite sure. I don't know if he'll pitch this year or not, but he's hoping to uh, here with Atlanta. Leadoff walk to Fowler. Well, he'd be a good fit on this club with all the young starting pitchers that they have, with all the experience that he has. He could be a mentor. Swinging strike on Chris Bryant. Yeah, if you just look around at some of the teams that might be in sell mode, including the Braves and all the players who potentially could get moved, I, I'd have a hard time believing there's going to be that much action. Yeah, well, there's always more proposed trades, but more speculation than actual bodies that move. And there's been some talk, some people have. Uh, Put forth the notion that the trade deadline should be pushed back a couple of weeks so teams have a little longer to assess their situation as to whether they actually have a real chance to make a run at a playoff spot or not. Uh, apparently, Justin Upton came out of the ball game today in San Diego, and people were thinking, oh, he's been traded, but. Uh, Muscle tightness and there's some weather now they're actually in a rain delay at Petco Park which is the big news because. It never rains in Southern California. Hit hard and foul just foul good call it was close. Toby Basney right on top of it. That ball landed right at his feet. Featuring the power game here today, a lot of fastballs and cutters, not so much with the curveball. Hardly ever uses his changeup anyway. It's being pointed out, and it's true, Arotis Viscaino was acquired by the Cubs from the Braves uh, after Tommy John's surgery, but he was not an established big leaguer. They set up. You know, not that the Reds would move Devin Mazzarocco, but somebody like that. Very rarely see that kind of guy traded. Fowler runs. The ball gets past Przinsky. It'll be a stolen base for Fowler. Przinsky like peeks to see Fowler running and loses the baseball. No. Extra 90 feet for Fowler because he was sliding into second base. Didn't see the ball get by Przinsky. Meantime, three and two the count on Bryant. 
By the way, it's raining there in a delay in San Diego. It's an Upton, one nothing Rockies in the fifth. Ball four, two walks here in the fifth. Don't miss your chance to catch the best, the best matchups in baseball. Reserve your place in line uh, for history in the making. Join the season ticket holder waiting list. It's easy. It's free to register. For details, visit cubs.com slash wait list. Anthony Rizzo without the uh, typical undershirt, or at least the long sleeve version he normally wears. I think he's going sans undershirt. By the way, you mentioned it was raining in San Diego. I'm sorry I missed that. I was distracted. So we mentioned it twice. Well, it's it's so rare that it rains there. It deserves so it mentioning it twice. It deserves it, yes. When you set up, then I thought, oh, I wanted to mention that, and you had already done it. So, in case you missed JD mentioning it, fly ball to right. Fowler is not going to be able to tag, just not deep enough. Marcakis makes a catch. By the way, it is raining in San Diego. <laughs> well, I think it bears repeating because I make so many things up. <laughs> You're not quite sure, no. right? And they have gone to the 14th in St. Louis, 1 1 Mets Cardinals. <laughs> How about the Tigers? They lost two of three to Baltimore this weekend. Detroit under 500. Man, what did I read? First time uh, since early in 2013, maybe? They are what? Uh, boy, nine and a half games back yeah. coming into play today. They are not the Phillies yet. But that window is starting to close, isn't it? At least it feels like it. I don't know much about their farm system. Right, yeah, I don't either. So, our Southwest Airlines, how far did it fly? The home run by Jorge Soler went 415 feet to straightaway center. Southwest Airlines, how far did it fly? And on the hands that time. Yeah, even though he juiced that fastball, Miller's not going to shy away. He likes his heater, and why wouldn't you? He's thrown at 97 miles an hour at times here today. But that's that's to Solaire's liking. He he likes to hit the fastball. Since we're talking trade deadline and about Tigers and we look at this Cubs team. I guess the, the general lesson. It's not always the case but that is in the big picture. Patience with young players young teams. Maybe impatience with older teams. And if you look over recent history there are probably some veteran laden clubs that should have dismantled sooner than they actually did. But that's a very difficult call to make. Foul tip, strike three. Yeah. Two outs. It's an easier call to make on the outside looking in, but when you're in the middle of it and you're running a ball club that's had a lot of success and they've got iconic players and the Phillies are the, the team that comes to mind, uh, it's, it's tough to, to move on from that. I look at Schwarber right between Mike Borzello and Taylor Teagarden. He is attached at the hip to all the catching guys. I'm going to ask him if this has been like going to school at Indiana. <laughs> Daily quiz. Yeah, who, do you, who do you have for catching? Well, I got uh, catching 101 with uh, Professor Borzello. Coglin, strike one. Theory of game calling at two in the afternoon with Associate Professor Ross.
Well, I think one example of the not impatience, but pulling the trigger even when some of the noise outside says don't. Uh, you know, Mahalam, Feldman, Samarja, Hamill. You remember hearing from Cub fans going, they can't trade Samarja. You've got to have some intestinal fortitude when you do have a plan like Theo Epstein and this Cubs front office has had over the past four or five years and you now bearing the fruits of that here in 2015. And look, he's back, Jason Hamill, re signed in the offseason. That gets by Prasinski again. That could be a pass ball. I don't think that ball hit the dirt. Well, it's the kind of day where in this heat a catcher might start seeing double. Yeah, he's it's on Brzezinski. That'll be a pass ball. Miller not an easy guy to catch. He throws hard, has good movement, but it's just that's fatigue right there. Ball four, they're loaded for Castro. Now for the third consecutive game, the Cubs doing a real nice job making these brave starters expend a lot of energy. Miller at 93 pitches working in the fifth. Benuelos, the youngster last night, lasted four and two thirds with a high pitch count. Game one of the series on Friday, Julio Tehran, four and two thirds, 90 pitches. Uh, Saturday next, it's the 25th. Mark it on your calendar, put a little circle there. Uh, Cubs play the Phillies. First pitch is at 3.05. First 10,000 fans will receive a Jorge Soler debut bobblehead presented by Illinois Pork Producers. For more information, visit Cubs.com. Look at the shin guard. Isn't that great? That is awesome. That is and great detail. Oink, oink. The head to neck ratio, probably not quite accurate, but it's the bobblehead thing for you. Strike on Castro. If you had asked me, does Starlin Castro have a grand slam in his career? I, I would have guessed probably, but he doesn't. Still looking for his first inside out swing. And he fouls it behind Brandon Hyde. Yeah, it looks like he's making a commitment here today to try to hit the ball the other way and, and try to hit it hard the other way. And that's that's a positive development. He gets into that rut where he's pulling off the ball and, and rolling over and hitting ground balls to the shortstop side. I think he does his best work when he's thinking other way and then we'll turn on a mistake breaking ball. Call strike three and the inning is over. Some R.E.M. To break, Cubs three, Braves nothing in the rubber game.
Space Buds for you. Three nothing. The Cubs have the lead. Yuri Perez, the lead it off, shows bunt, takes a slider up and in. The Athletics 14, the Twins nothing as they play the top of the ninth in Oakland. I'm going to say the A's probably will win that game. Foul first base side. That would be two out of three for the A's in that series. Plus Fran Tarkenton can uh, lead a furious rally. Oakland A's have a plus 40 run differential. Yeah, they, they've been a, a strange team this year. Nine under 500 and last in the American League West. The run differential is actually better than the first place Angels. Right, so their Pythagorean record, they should be above 500. It's based on the run differential. Close, got him. Nice play by Arietta to stick with it as Rizzo got caught in between and had no chance to get to the bag. That'll go four to one. Braves are going to wait a little bit and perhaps challenge this one. Yep. Yeah, there was a play earlier where Anthony made the early determination that Herrera was going to make the play and, and hustled back to the back. This time he did not have time. And a heads up play by Arietta. This is a play for a, a pitcher a lot of times will give up on. He hustles on over there and I believe they got him. He runs through the bag. Maybe he's safe. Simmons grounded out in the second. On one bounce to Bryant. It gives us a chance to step aside and see what's coming up on WGN. JD and our WGN sports crew. Sizzling hot Atlanta. Cubs with a one game lead for the second wild card spot. One up on the Giants, who have a 2 1 lead at Arizona in the bottom of the eighth. As they look for their sixth consecutive win, Giants right now four back of the Dodgers, who won earlier today. Miller sends a fly ball to shallow center. It is Fowler to make the catch and a quick one, two, three for Arietta. Three, five. Cubs, three. Braves, nothing.
nine right now for your chance to win six meals from the simple six menu at Subway. Subway, eat fresh. Message and data rates may apply. Jake Arietta doing what he normally does. That is be really good on the mound. He's also one for two at the plate and he'll bat behind his catcher David Ross. Shelby Miller closing in on 100 pitches. I imagine if they had a base runner in the fifth. Freddie Gonzalez probably would have hit for him trying to get a little something going but there were two out nobody on when Miller's spot came up so he took the at bat stays in the game. Cubs are 14 and 9 when David Ross starts. Nice pick over there by Siriaco and he's going to get Ross. He might not walk but he sure can pick it. Fancy glove work. Swing and a miss by Arietta. Like what David Ross said after the game last night about. Miguel Montero had a chance to catch John Lester while Ross was on the concussion DL. Now Montero's on the DL. He said maybe Miggy got him uh, locked in. Maybe that'll be a little bit of a blessing in disguise as well. You never want to see a guy go to the DL due to a concussion, but just having somebody else catch Lester as a just in case down the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, because you don't want Lester to be so uncomfortable, so dependent on, on, on David Ross that he doesn't feel comfortable with somebody else back there. Two outs, here's Herrera. It's interesting, you know, Miller has not been on top of his game here today, but he has only given up three runs. So he's had to battle. Try to keep them within shouting distance. Otis Redding to break. Maybe in the catch. Three nothing Cubs in the sixth.
beverage package and a unique gift for each guest. The Legend Suite is the most exclusive way to watch a Cubs game. For more information, visit Cubs.com slash suites. One and foul by Jace Peterson. Three nothing. The Cubs have the lead. Great matchup in New York today. Felix Hernandez and CC Sabathia in a low run affair. Mark Teixeira with an eighth inning home run. Yankees beat the M's two to one. Ninety two degrees at game time in the Bronx. Starters got no decisions. Sabathia six innings one run. Same for. King Felix. Sabathia needed it. He lowered his ERA to 5.25. Yeah, and I would imagine if he continues to struggle, the Yankees will look for an alternative there. They're in first place. And a three and a half game lead coming into play today. Swing and a miss, strike three on the curve. Hey, like the movie, he has trouble with the curve. Struck out three times last night. This is the second punch out for Peterson here this afternoon. Another baseball movie I haven't seen yet. Clint Eastwood is in it. He's got a little vision problem. Okay. It's one of the plot lines. Eight shutout innings for Marco Estrada. As the Blue Jays beat Tampa Bay for nothing. It was better than Chris Archer. Yankees a bit of a surprise team. The Red Sox haven't been able to get any real traction going, but a tightly bunch group there in the AL East. The Royals, Jays, and Rays all. Relatively close to the Yanks. So that, yeah, we're talking about the trade deadline coming up. It is when so many teams in contention, it limits the number of potential trading partners, of course. At least if you're looking to do a, you know, a prospect for veteran type deal. That Orioles 9 3 win at Detroit. Justin Verlander could not get out of the fourth inning. He was charged with seven runs today. Christmas in July. <laughs> I appreciate the effort and the promotion. They've done a really nice job with it today, but um, it's just hard to get into a Christmas mood when it's this hot, which is kind of the point, I guess. Christmases would like for you at Houston. I'm sure you had a few where it was pretty warm. Yeah, we didn't stay there much. We just, you know, being Northeasterners, uh, yeah, warm. Well, jumping in the pool on Christmas Day was just. A little yeah, it was, yeah it was, we, I think the, all the years I was there, I think we were there for maybe one or two Christmases. Chris my Lined in the center. That's a second hit for the Braves and only their fourth. The last two days. So Maben is on. 
for Marcakis. Yeah, no, no red flags, of course, yet the way Arietta's been going along, but it's a stage of the game on a hot day like today where you start to pay extra attention over there in the dugout. You want to see how he's moving around out there if he's starting to lose command of his pitches. Hitters usually let you know they start squaring the ball up. Well, you get tired, the legs get a little wobbly and start to elevate. Kick the pitch and it misses. The Pirates got swept in Milwaukee. Six won the final today. Brewers with two in the seventh, four in the eighth. Pirates had gone 13 and three into the All Star break. They also lost their shortstop, Jordy Mercer. He collided with Carlos Gomez. Early in the ball game, he had to be carted off. Could not put any pressure on one of his legs. Wow. I'm not quite sure how serious an injury, but it doesn't sound good. And Josh Harrison's on the DL, right? So they've been playing Gung a fair bit at third base, and they're not happy with uh, Pedro Alvarez. He's made a ton of errors over at first base after they determined that he couldn't play third base. Yeah, so this is a little, a little bit of a red flag yeah. here now as Jake elevating. You see Ross looking in towards the dugout, perhaps trying to send a bit of a message. More patient in this situation. One because it's Arietta and he's so good. And two, the, the Braves don't have a whole lot of firepower in the middle of their order. This is a team that hits for a decent average, but they don't draw walks and they don't hit home runs. So it's hard for them to come from behind unless you open the door, kick the ball around a little bit. Dead last in MLB in long balls. Big park, that's part of it. Bounce toward the middle. Castro will field. He's got to make the play at first because of the shift. Herrera could not get over to second. So they do get an out at first. Yeah, good, good decision there by Starlin. I mean, I think there was a, a possibility of a play being made there at second base. Uh, Herrera thought they had a play. It would have been a fun play to watch, but I think that's a smart decision by Castro to get the shore out. Here comes Chris Bazio. Kind of looked like a, a football play there. He faked the pitch to Herrera, and then he went up top to Rizzo. Yeah, there's Bazio telling him, nice play. Nobody throwing in the Cubs bullpen right now, so this is just a chance to go out there and let him catch his breath with two outs here in the sixth. Check in with him, make sure he's feeling okay. Yeah, see, if all goes well, they're going to get the out there at second base. But there's no guarantee that all would have went well. And you've got a three-run lead. One ball, no strikes. Kelly Johnson, the hitter. Two and zero. Oh. He will take a walk. Brzezinski on deck. Oh. 
Mm -hmm. Missed again. You know, Arietta like Lester last night does not want to give in. He's trying to hit a corner here on 2 and 0. Oh. Has to be willing to be a little more aggressive here 3 and 0. Oh. Back in at three and two. Here it is. Swing and a miss and a curve. And he comes all the way back to strike him out. Three nothing Cubs. Cubs fan camp. Someday will go all the way. Uh, he played that at the end of the uh, Hot Stove Cool Music 2015. Got carried off the stage by members of the uh, Cubs team. It was a great night. Thanks to Eddie for helping support the foundation to be named later. Raised a record amount of money for charity, over $400,000. Thanks to everybody who came out to Metro a week ago Thursday. Here's left-hander Luis Avilan. Avilan uh, working for the 47th time. He's been busy, he hasn't he? 360 the ERA we saw on Friday night. He's uh, celebrating a birthday today. 26 is Luis. Freddie Gonzalez able to squeeze one more out of Shelby Miller before turning to the bullpen. Miller's line. A solid effort here today. Three runs, only one earned. Fowler batting right handed. 
two seamer with pretty good movement at 93 from Avilani has a real good change up. Off the end of the bat a little bit of a knuckling liner gets over. The shortstop Simmons and in the left. Second time Fowler's been on today. He's had a good weekend. Seeing the ball well. Not expanding his strike zone too much. There was a change up that time from Avilon. It stayed up in the zone a little bit. And for the second time in this series, Simmons tries to climb that ladder, comes up just a little bit short. He has not had to make a lot of plays this weekend. Fowler aboard, nobody out. Bryant, ball one. Well, as I said before, if that's quote bad Shelby Miller, it's pretty good. Yeah, six innings, four hits. As I mentioned, three runs, one earned. He walked four, three of them in the fifth, struck out eight. But in jeopardy of seeing his one loss record dip below 500. Sixteenth inning in St. Louis. One one. I believe starter Carlos Martinez has pitched in that game. He has, yeah. He's in there right now. One scoreless inning. Cooney Manus, Choke, Tui Valala. That's fun to say. Segrist, Sokolovich, Villanueva, Martinez. So I suppose Rosenthal's unavailable. Strike called. It's three and one. Yeah, and that's what I would guess. The spelling be there. Tui Valala and Skolovich. Ball four. Up starting a rally here in the seventh. Chris Bryant started the afternoon, his afternoon, striking out the first two times, but he's walked the last two. Now a chance for Rizzo to pad the lead a little bit. Here's a random Anthony Rizzo factoid. Okay. He has a uh, 509 on base percentage when leading off an inning. That's the highest in all of baseball. Well, high in Major League Baseball. Are you saying he should hit first in the lineup? No. Generally second or third this year. Although he hit cleanup on Friday. Bounces one to first. They get one out. They get two. Nifty footwork there by Andalon at first base. Yeah, whether well, intentional or not, I don't know, but yeah. yeah for a left-handed pitcher, and he, he found the bag. They turn it the hard way. Key here is the first baseman getting rid of, rid of it in a hurry before that base runner gets in the way of the throw at second base. Johnson able to do that, and yeah, Avilon. Some creative footwork to finish the play at first. Well, you can speak to this because at one point you were left-handed. I think you still are. Uh, it, mm -hmm. It's tougher, right? For you lefties over there at first. Well, I never tried it right handed, but <laughs> any any play that involved having to run and turn around, find the baseball, find the bag was, uh, was a little challenging for me. But that throw from second in particular, you your right hander, you've got a little better angle headed to the bag where the lefty kind of has to turn kind his body. Back. Yeah. 
Yeah, ideally Maybe he just you, made it look awkward. Uh, I don't ideally, know. if you get over there soon enough, you can square up to the throw. But a lot of times, you don't have that opportunity. So they intentionally walk Solaire to bring Coglin up. So let's let's watch Avilon. Yeah, he just kind of got twisted a little yeah, bit at the back. Right. This would be an opportunity missed if Coglin can't convert. And two on with nobody out for the middle of the order. This, the start of this inning kind of had that step on their throat feel to it. Felt like if he could get a couple more here, he could just put them away. Mm -hmm. First and second, nobody out in the fifth. Failed to score. Ended up leaving the bases loaded. Solaire runs. No throw. It's his second of the year. Sure, what happened there? But the manager didn't look too pleased. Two and two. Swing and a miss to end the inning. So we head off to the bottom of the seventh. Cubs leading three nothing. Airlines. Book your low fare now at Southwest.com. 
Ford, America's best-selling brand, inviting you to go further in our fuel-efficient vehicles. Check out our entire lineup at your Ford store or at localfordstores.com. Subway, make a smart play for savory subs this season. Score more flavor at Subway restaurants. Subway, eat fresh. TrustedChoice.com for all your insurance needs. Honda Dream Garage Sales Event, now at your Honda dealer. And by Budweiser, still brewed the hard way. This Bud's for you. Georgia. Georgia. The whole day through. Just an old sweet song. Georgia on my mind. Georgia on my mind. I said a Georgia. Time for today's Honda game Georgia. summary. I need to interrupt Ray Charles. 3 0 Cubs. Jake Arietta, terrific once again. Jonathan Herrera with the go ahead two run single. And Jorge Soler has homered. Honda Dream Garage sales event now at your Honda dealer. Positive developments here today. Dexter Fowler's had a good day at the plate. As Len mentioned, so Lair goes deep. Herrera continues to do good things when given an opportunity. And Jake Arietta, he's into bonus time now, man, to get into the seventh on a hot day like today. That's pretty impressive. Especially the way it started. Had to work awfully hard to get through that first. A lot of low stress innings since then. Pitch to Przinski is hit foul out of play. And by low stress, I mean the Braves just haven't put a lot of pressure on him. The fact that, you know, just a 3 nothing game, obviously it's still a game that could get away, but. Brave hitters have not put a whole lot of pressure on Arietta here this afternoon. Fly to left as Coughlin calls it in. You know what they're doing in San Diego? Um, taking the tarp off the field. Yes. Not yet resumed, but they're going to shortly. Um, did I read that that's the fourth? Rain delay in the history of Petco Park. I don't know. Did you? I thought I read that somewhere. <laughs> I don't monitor your reading habits. <laughs> <laughs> thought maybe you had read it as well. Okay. That sounds right. That's that's one where definitely if you say it with conviction, I'm I'm in. I believe you. Bonnet foul by Siriaco. Yeah, you know, I, you watch it. We watch Arietta every fifth day. Other teams broadcasters usually after the game go, wow, that guy. Mm -hmm. And some say, I remember in, in Baltimore, he wasn't this good. Um, if you're an opposing offense, I'm not quite sure what the game plan would be against him. Can't think of a start he's had this year where we've said, well, his stuff just doesn't look quite right. I mean, he's been 94, 95 yeah. all year mm -hmm. long, sometimes 96. You know, he had that one in Cleveland where he walked five or six guys, um, but stuff wise, he was still really good. And, and I guess you get a sense of how good a guy like Granke has been this year because we watched Arietta all the time and how dominant he has been. And his ERA still would have run higher than Granky's, and that's hard to imagine. We were talking baseball names last night, maybe the night before. This is a good name, Pedro Seriaco. Like if you were making a a baseball movie, you might use that.
Like Pedro Serrano. Yes, kind Pedro, of close. Yeah. Pedro works. A lot of great Pedros in the history of this game as he swings and misses. That's a hat trick. Nine strikeouts now for Arietta. Playing fantasy baseball, MLB.tv serves up real time highlights of pitch tracking uh, on your out of market fantasy players live or on demand on over 400 devices. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Get MLB.tv today. And if you're playing fantasy baseball, hopefully you started Jake Arietta today. Times have we seen Jake smile during a game, pump his fist, yell at an umpire? I, I can't no, no, remember no. any instances of him showing anything other than his poker face. Yeah, that's a good point. His demeanor, you know, it's, you talk about mound presence. I mean, it's all, you know, he's all business out there. Territory. Good effort by Soler. It's a double for Perez. Watch this thing. Yeah, he got beat by that fastball. He was well behind it. That is amazing. It never been <laughs> foul with the spin and yeah. on it. Yeah, we hit a right-handed hitter hitting the ball in that direction. You think it would have some side spin that would kick it foul. It was very a worry. Simmons. The other thing about Arietta, not to go all hawk on you, uh huh, but he may have the best posture of any pitcher I've ever seen. <laughs> but he talks a lot about balance. He's just a very balanced athlete, right? I mean, we we we've talked about the real simple delivery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just he never seems out of control. Yeah, the beard is a little bit nothing else. Yeah, he's a very thoughtful guy. You know, he could talk mechanics all night long with you. Uh, has a great understanding of you know of his delivery. And, and I think you know, I think he just feels like he's making up for lost time. You know, his guy's sure. always been blessed with that big arm. He had his struggles in Baltimore. Now he's figured it out. And uh, he's doing everything he can to make this run last as long as possible. Yeah, we don't want to make it sound like you know he works harder than everybody because that's kind of a trite thing we broadcasters like to say about guys. But yeah, I would I would guess that he's not going to have a ton of regrets when it's all said and done, however many years it is. Yeah, he may regret that he didn't figure it out sooner while he was over in Baltimore. But yeah, since, since putting on this Cub uniform, he's done everything possible, you know, to make himself. A top notch major league pitcher. And, I, and I'm. I'm of the mindset that. He maybe needed that to get to where he is now. Sure. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That, that's the key. You know you. Everybody experiences some measure of failure in this game and how do you react to it. One and two to Simmons. Oh, 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 that's about as <laughs> much as you'll see from Arietta. That's just the, the 
three steps toward the dugout. Yeah, he's just trying to buy a call here. Clifton full count three and two. Kurdoslovich switch hitter on deck. Last inning he went to the curveball late. On Peterson and Johnson. Ball four. Tried the front door cutter there and uh, just left it inside. Yeah, and I, it, you know, it's funny. I just said that we haven't seen a whole lot of. Of animation from Jake, but he, he, I think he, he really upset he didn't get that call earlier. He knew he was out of the inning. It will bring the pitching coach out. Yeah, and, and when you start to get tired, you, you, you know, that's, you, you start asking for a little more. You're looking for a little help. Slovich. Definitely a big spot here if the Braves are going to get back into this game. They have had two men on now just twice, and both times with two outs. First inning, and here in the seventh. Figurative leash for the manager. It's longer for guys like Arietta and Lester, maybe Hamill, shorter for others. So he has definitely decided that Jake Arietta, by and large, gets the benefit of the doubt. And why not? The numbers seem to back him yeah, up, too. Yeah, it's a, it's a matter, you know, he's pitched so well and he's pitched effectively late in games. So he's earned the manager's trust. Scored two. <laughs> to change the dynamic a little bit, wouldn't it? Well, you know, Pedro Strope's been a little shaky here of late. Um, so that probably factors into Joe's thinking a little bit as well. Oslovich from Sarasota, Florida, 26 years old, debuted in 2013. Decent power numbers in the minor leagues. With 15 home runs at AAA last year. 
the Long Beach State and the University of Miami. He's the nephew of Mike Greenwell. A big leaguer. Two balls, two strikes. Here it is. He struck him out. Late cut there by Terdoslovich. Ten punch outs for Arietta. Three nothing. Yeah, a job well done. Boy, a hot, steamy day. He stood tall yet again, and this tremendous run by the Cubs starters continues. Basically, been playing a game of uh, anything you can do, I can do better for the last two weeks or so. Cup David Ardsma. David Ardsma worked two innings in the ball game last night through 33 pitches, allowed no hits, no runs, struck out four. Might not have the same zip on his uh, stuff this afternoon as he did last night. Last ball slider and a split with the former first round pick of the Giants. It was way back in 2003 out of Rice University. Two and one. Third in to right. Soft liner for Castro. So he's aboard. Well, see, there's that approach we talked about with Castro. He's been kind of right field centric all afternoon, and good to see him get some positive results with that approach. Always good to get good feedback when you're trying to work on something. But 
Ross caught a shutout last night trying to do the same here today. One of his former teams the Red Sox tonight trying to score for the first time in that series. Against the Angels back to back shutout losses first time since 09. For the Red Sox. Shallow right. Peterson. How do you get to Wrigley Field? The Cubs suggest the use of public transportation for bike riders. Use the Cubs courtesy bike check located near Clark and Addison. And for drivers, the Cubs provide free parking and shuttle service on night weekend games from 3900 North Rockwell. For details, visit Cubs.com. Kyle Schwarber will hit for Arietta. Took a pinch hit at bat last night. Swung at the first pitch, hit a fly ball to center. Ball one. Giants did win today. So they sweep the Diamondbacks. They have taken their last six in a row. Cubs will need to win to stay ahead of them in the race for the second wild card. Giants have been kind of a streaky team, haven't they? I mean, I guess all teams are. It's the nature of baseball. But oh, they, they, they seem they like have. more than others. Yeah. They'll, they'll lose nine out of ten. You think they're ready to crash and burn, and then they'll win six in a row. Yeah, they've had uh, winning streaks of eight, uh, a winning streak of eight, and a losing streak. Of eight, both happened early in the season. They went nine and thirteen in April. The Giants then won twenty-one games in May, twelve and fourteen in June, and they're seven and seven in July. They're now six and seven against the Diamondbacks and five and seven against the Rockies, but they're nine and three against the Dodgers. Go figure. Swing by Schwarber, two and two. It's like we'll see Pedro Strope in the bottom of the eighth. He got him on the swing. A little late getting started and a little emergency hack trying to get a piece. We'll not put that AB on the highlight reel. Well, he's had a bunch of really good ones already. To Herrera. Two run single in the second. That gave the Cubs the lead. Later, Soler would homer. Hardsman's from Colorado, went to Rice University. Debuted with the Giants in 04. He did not pitch in the big leagues last year.
just a handful of minor league starts but by and large he's been a short reliever his entire pro career and that was after he was a closer at Rice three and two. Won a college World Series in 03. He faced 16 batters in that college World Series. He struck out 15 of them. That's better than average. I would say so. Base hit left field. Castro will stop at second. Two hit day for Jonathan Herrera. Here comes Fowler. He grew up and just keeps on rolling along, doing his thing. Yeah, much easier to go the other way with that high fastball than to try to pull that pitch. of traffic for the Cubs in the fifth inning on but they have not been able to add to their lead. The pinnacle of Artsman's major league career 2009 and 10 with Seattle 69 saves combined. Ton of success here combined with runners in scoring position, but that one hit was a big one. Two run single. Bounce to first. Johnson will beat Fowler to the bag by a step, and that will end the Cubs' threat in the eighth. They have a three nothing lead late. Great to have you with us. Hope your weekend has gone well. And the Cubs closing in on a series victory with a three nothing lead here. Six outs to go, and it's Pedro Strope here in the eighth. It hasn't gone all that smoothly here as of late. As he works to the top of the order now for Atlanta. Peterson, Maven, and Marquez. A touch for two runs on a couple of hits. First pitch swinging Soler on the move and he's not going to get to it and that'll bounce out of play. It's a leadoff double for Peterson. He 
Peterson uh, struck out a bunch the last couple of days to tax that first pitch from Strope. I was just getting ready to finish his line from the other night. Uh, he suffered the loss on Friday. And uh, immediate trouble here with the leadoff double by Peterson. But unlike Friday, he's got a little wiggle room here. Gabriel came over to the Cubs along with Jake Arietta and Cash on July 2nd of 2013 for Scott Feldman and uh, catcher Steve Clevenger. Call that a big win for the Cubs in that particular trade. Cameron Maben. Strike. On a fastball at 95. Yeah, this has been kind of his inning, right? So whether righty lefty doesn't matter in this spot in the first half, this would be Pedro's inning. But because of some recent struggles, got Russell up. The starter went seven. So Joe, if he needs to, he could use two or three guys to get through this eighth. Bridge to Jason Mott. Right, and that's the beauty of having guys like Arietta who pitch deep into games. They limit the number of outs the bullpen has to get. Slider one and two. This was a string of left handers after Maven. Three of them with Markakis, Johnson, and Pruszynski do up. And a ball that got loose out in left field. Not of its own doing, however. Somebody had to actually put the ball in that spot, indicating that it somehow is a living, breathing thing. Bryant looks back the runner and gets Maven. What was the animal that got loose? Was it the King Dome the one time? Was it a squirrel or something? And the on the blooper reel, the guy. Yeah, like he went out to get it. Then it was it, a cat. Was it a cat yeah. and it bit him and he was yeah. jumping around on the warning track? Yeah. Assuming that animal did not have rabies or anything. So we, we laugh at that video. I would hope that it had a happy ending. <laughs> at least for one of them. <laughs> Grim and Russell. Ideally both, but. Cat's probably in like some blooper hall of fame hanging out being pampered. Telling all the other young cats. Every, yeah, that was me. Month. Yeah. Perhaps you've seen my video. That was before YouTube. Yeah, and this this is where the, the Braves clearly miss Freddie Freeman. Uh, so they don't have an, an active hitter on their club right now with double digit home runs. Freeman leads the way with 12, but he's on the disabled list. The ball hit well. This, however, will be an out. Freeman was out uh, before the game today taking some ground balls, so the Braves hope he'll be back soon. Has been the man in the middle of the batting order for this club. He, he's kind of the one guy they couldn't be without for any length of time. And he's still not back. Slider low. Freeman went on the DL June 23rd, retroactive to June 18th. The Braves have uh, averaged 2.7 runs per game in his absence.
Irvin foul to left. One and two. They're in the 18th in St. Louis. One oh, to one. Hang with them, boys. Yep, longest game of the year. Swing and a miss. Stroke after the leadoff double. Goes one, two, three. Still three nothing as we go to the ninth. In the top of the 18th against the Mets, tied at one. The Brewers having a very good start to the month of July, but overall a very rough year, still in last place. Pirates swept by Milwaukee this weekend, and we mentioned earlier the Reds lost today, so they're nine games under 500 going into that series that starts tomorrow night at Great American Ballpark. And it's a Rodas Vizcaino who got the win in relief on Friday against his former team. Pitching with his team trailing today 3 nothing. Five times with the Braves so far this year for the young right hander and so far so good. This guy's firm. He can rush it up there in the upper 90s. Now the funky thing about that Mets Cardinals game. Uh, granted they've played a lot of innings but there's been 29 hits in that game. And the Mets just went ahead in the top of the 18th. Swinging strike on uh, Bryant. The uh, Padres rained out. So they got started, but they did not get through the requisite five. Rockies and Padres will make up that game on September 10th. Ninety nine with movement. You know it's good movement when the catcher can't catch it. Is that Neil Ramirez back there? Yes. Check out that this little deal here. Flinging that some kind of a weighted ball yep. zone. I've never seen that. Foul tip strike three. I'm gonna have to do some investigative journalism and find out what that's all about. Ooh. Some new uh, warm-up technique. 
So that's a full house for Chris today. Strikeouts over walks. So Carlos Martinez, uh, starter, uh, all star starter for the Cardinals, and they had to use him in an emergency relief role, and he's up around 70 pitches, trailing now two to one in the 18th. Did he make the all-star team? He was on the Yes, uh, he did. He, did. he was okay. Named to replace somebody, I believe. Yeah, that sounds right. Oh, he won the uh, the extra. Did he get the extra man? Yeah. Yep. Diving stop Simmons. Safe is Rizzo. Simmons actually seemed slightly deliberate there and maybe miscalculated Rizzo's speed. Yeah, well, I think you're exactly right. Um, sparkling play. Maybe just took a little extra click to get the ball out of the glove cleanly into the throwing hand. And Freddie Gonzalez. Uh, Contemplating a challenge here, and they're going to play on. Base hit. So first time Rizzo's been on today. One out of five. Solaire homered in the third. Intentionally walked, stole a base in the seventh. Three-one Mets. They played it two in the eighteenth. Rizzo heads to second. Pierzynski is fried. The wild pitch on Vizcaino. Pitchers in that game today have made 315 pitches. Inside, two balls, no strikes. Might have to roll Molina onto his back and Pull his feet to get to <laughs> stretch him out, get him out of the squat. Foul tip. Well, you're seeing this stuff from Vizcaino that the Cubs saw and liked, and why well, they went and got him from the Braves. Spent much of his time in the Cubs chain recovering from. Tommy John surgery. Now back in Atlanta. Well, it's a fun match up here. You got a young guy with a high octane heater, a young hitter with tremendous bat speed. Tommy Lastella, the guy who came over for Vizcaino, has been on the DL a long time with an oblique injury. Up right side. Kelly Johnson makes a catch. Well, Tommy Lestella, a guy with very good on base skills, and if he gets healthy and gets to the big leagues, he could help out in the second half. Uh, Javi Baez. Has resumed baseball activity down in Arizona, so hopefully he'll be working his way back to regular playing time at Iowa, and maybe he'll be a guy you could uh, see here down the stretch.
2 and 0 oh to Coglin. Jason Mott finished the ball game last night. Uh, it was a four nothing Cub win. He threw 19 pitches. Right now it's a safe situation, but if the Cubs score again, obviously it would not be. And I don't know if Joe Madden would contemplate a plan B. Anybody else is up out there or not? Driven the other way, and that ball is going to one out the wall. Rizzo trots home. Coughlin to second. Some deep gaps here that felt like it might have left the yard, but it hit the warning track instead. It's four nothing. Good day for Coglin. Singleton scored in the second. Also walked and now an RBI double. The Cubs who had a lot of chances after the Solaire home run in the third, but could not add on. Finally, do here in the ninth. A good strike of the baseball for Chris Coghlan. Well, the guys with the no undershirts having a day. Rizzo, Coghlan, kind of a thing, right? But it's really hot. Jake Arietta pitches. Popped up by Starlin Castro to end the inning. They add to the lead. Four nothing as we go to the bottom. Of inning number nine. Score last night, and it will be former Brave James Russell. Left handed hitting AJ Pruszynski, the due to lead off here in the Brave ninth. The numbers for Russell this year very good 33 appearances, a 171 earned run average. So a win for Arietta today would mean 11, a new career high for him. Just over halfway into the season. He led the Cubs with 10 last year. Travis Wood two years ago led the staff with nine. It's over in uh, St. Louis. Five hours, 55 minutes. Mets three. Cardinals one. 
teams combined to go one out of 34 with men in scoring position 39 left on base. It's a lot of people stranded. Ball one to Przinski. Pretty good looking pitch. One and one. Line foul. Doing a quick look at the game logs this year. This would be the first time the Cubs will have shut out a team in back to back games if they get these final two outs. Brzezinski lines out now, Syriaco. Check that. Uh, New York, right? This would be the second time. Yeah. yeah. I thought they had done it once, but I must have skipped over it. Yeah, back to back games in New York. Cubs gave up one run in that series, sweeping the Mets. So June 30th, July 1st, consecutive shutouts. So, second time within a month. Potentially at Lester and Arietta and their two starts here in Atlanta combining for 14 in the third innings five hits no runs. Four walks 17 strikeouts. Passing the baton to Clayton Richard he'll go tomorrow in Cincinnati. The change up there one and two. Rizzo won't catch it, but the ball lands foul. <laughs> so, Cubs need pitching, right? Is that what they're going to acquire? Yeah, what? Well, yeah, they need starting pitching. I mean, it's, it's it seems counterintuitive they right. pitch so well, but it, it is understandable that they would be in the market for yeah. a pitcher just to add, you know, just to add depth. Even if you don't get, you know, a veteran with a really good resume, you know, you're just looking to add. Got to be prepared in case somebody goes down. You can never ever have enough. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Two outs here in the night. Ooh, that's a that's a tough day for Syriaco. That's four consecutive strikeouts. A golden sombrero. All swinging. Take that bat to see Jobu. Right in there, 0 and 1. Two hits shut out last night. No runs, four hits allowed today. Oh and two. Like last night, a lot of Cub fans here up on their feet. Making some noise here.
Well, the sequel to Pitch Perfect is still playing in some theaters. Feels like that's what the movie has been here in Atlanta. Coming out of the All Star break, Cubs dropped Friday night's game, but these last two nights, they have not given the Braves many opportunities. Kevin Seitzer on the right, the hitting coach. One and two. On Perez, low, two and two. Yeah, no, I didn't see pitch perfect either. <laughs> but by golly, you better. Um, yeah, it's been a better weekend for the pitching coaches than the hitting coaches. That hit the bat. So foul ball still two and two. Raining in Anaheim, not a huge surprise. It's rained in San Diego, so the Red Sox and Angels have yet to get started. Just able to stay alive. Royals beat the White Sox. In Chicago, four to one. Astros shut out the Rangers, ten nothing, behind Dallas Keuchel. He struck out thirteen in seven innings. A career high. Three and two. Left hander ready. Here's a pitch. Ball four. Simmons do. And it looks like it will not be Russell to face him. Instead, Jason Mott. I think this is mostly about pitch count for Russell. So pitching change here in the ninth and we'll be right back. Yeah, Russell threw 18 pitches and I think Joe Matt just wants to keep him available didn't want him to get overextended here Jason Mott coming in to clean things up. Worked a scoreless night last night. A lot of walk had a strikeout. Threw 19 pitches. You get Russell out of there. 
Hopefully that Mott makes quick work of things here to finish this game so he's not impacted for tomorrow in terms of availability. So here's Simmons Gomes on deck. A pinch hit situation. If Simmons reaches tying run still in the Braves dugout. Perez takes off for second will not. Get a stolen base out of it one ball no strikes. Pretty good looking pitch too. Maybe inside a little bit. Pop out of play. By the way, with that Mets win today and the Nationals loss, New York is only two out in the East. So they're in both the division and wildcard race. Cubs went seven and zero oh against New York in the season series. Trying to go two and one against Atlanta. Strike two, one and two. And it'll be the Mets at the Nationals tomorrow night. We'll be in Cincinnati, Cubs and Reds. Here's the one two pitch. Third out, proving to be difficult to get. One two look out two and two. Right field, so Lair will not get it. And the Braves will break the shutout. Perez scores. Simmons with an opposite field double. That run charts to Russell. Four to one. Simmons putting up a good fight. Ultimately won the battle. Lined that high fastball the other way. So it is Johnny Gomes a pinch hitter and the tying run is Peterson on deck. The battle of the pre pitch routine here Mott and Gomes they got a lot going on. Tug on the jersey. Grab that. Bill of that helmet.
This should do it. Castro scoops. Cubs win. Cubs win. 4 1 the final. Herrera two run single. Soler homered. But really all about the starting pitching as it has been these last three weeks. Yeah, and in this three game series, the starting pitchers allowed one earned run. Kyle Hendricks gave up two runs, one earned in five and two thirds. John Lester, seven and a third scoreless. Arietta, seven shutout here today with 10 punch outs. So, yeah, there were some. Uh, very nice at bats. Herrera had a nice day. Coughlin as well. But man, the pitching has been outstanding. We'll have more from Turner Field in a moment. <laughs> 